What's happening this week then, Tom? Tell us all about it. <laughs> it's a lovely day this morning, and guess who's back? Yes, she's back. It's May. Give us a wave, May. <laughs> Our expert cleaner is cleaning up the uh, hatches, so we're removing the old seal inside and she's given it a general clean and she's done a great job on the uh, rims here of the hatches. Now the problem we have is we have a little bit of corrosion here. I don't think it's anything that the butyl tape can't sort out. But what I'm tempted to do is just to use an epoxy glue and lightly uh, apply it here and then sand it back so at least it fills the cavity. And round the corner in the carpenter's area, which is no longer the carpenter's area because they're back on the deck now, and we have Moo who's applied the first coat of uh, epoxy and fiberglass to those uh, bedding pieces. Show us Moo. So these are the teak beds, they've been given uh, one layer of uh, fibreglass and epoxy and he's just sanding it back now. And these are the other teak beds, and these are our cleat teak beds. And those are those beautiful jammer blocks that uh, Tui made. Just put in our first track using the bootle tape on the starboard side. I think it went well. Difficult to say until we actually test it by pouring water on it. So we're going to do the port side stay cell track now. And we have a little routine going. As you can see, Ton here is preparing the bolt heads. So he's putting tape around the bolt heads. We've got countersunk holes, so that will fill in that. We have also countersunk the actual bolt holes into the deck as well. And uh, the fiddly bit is putting the bootle tape on underneath. So what we do is we turn the track on its side, making sure you got the track the right way round, which I didn't earlier. I put a few in realizing I had the track the wrong way round. And uh, so we sort of push one in like so push it in so it sticks and then we wrap the tape around the underneath. Okay, yeah. so we've all done now the fiddly bit. The next fiddly bit is getting it all lined up. Okay, so obviously we're going to have some overspill. Uh, we were quite liberal with the tape, it's pretty cheap stuff and uh, you can wipe away the excess with white spirit, but uh, we just want to make sure we got those uh, countersunk holes fully covered. 
So we'll just push it down a little bit more and then we'll uh, go underneath and start applying the nuts and backing plates. things to watch out for. Of course if you're uh, if you've taken off a teak deck then your bolts are going to be longer and uh, with our new ceiling we had to cut the bolts down to size. And the other thing was the new struts we've put in place for the ceiling had covered one or two of the old bolt holes so we just had to uh, route those out just to make space for them. On the whole though, it's, uh, it's been a pretty straightforward exercise, but uh, like I said a moment ago, the real test is when we uh, pour water on it. Of course now that we've removed the teak deck, it means the through deck bolts are a little bit too long, so we can't put our ceiling up. So TUI is uh, cutting them down to size. Well, he's supposed to be, I don't know what he's doing actually. He's just sitting there playing with himself. Come on, Tui, let's see some action. So we saw Moo earlier fiberglassing the beds, the teak beds for the cleats and the uh, fair leads. And you've seen this before of course, it's the epoxy with micro balloons that uh, Moo is now fairing down. So this is a typical scene in the boatyard. We've got the uh, the work, the little Burmese workers working hard, whilst the owners just yeah, sit around chew the cud. With bloody talking, gas <laughs> baggy. <laughs> We're supervising. I'm true, supervising. Come on, show us your anti fell then. Look at this. How's that, eh? Black water line. Tell us about the uh, the anti fell. What you put in it. Uh, tributyl tin, 3%. Um, it's supposed to be very good. It's very illegal anywhere but Thailand <laughs> so, or in Malaysia, so we're going to try it. But it should should work. Have you got the got the bottle left? No, I threw the bottle away in case someone saw it. <laughs> <laughs> so Kerry, last week we saw you deploying your life raft. Are you glad you invested in that? Look at that. How many days was that? Three days? Before three days. Yeah, three days. Uh, well, it would have given me probably another two days alive after sinking. So I suppose <laughs> there's always the upside. <laughs> Gives you time to contemplate your death. <laughs> Tom, tell us about the uh, hatches. What are we doing? <laughs> okay, we're having some fun and games with our port lights. Uh, if you remember we actually got rid of one, so we've got one spare which is just as well because we've had a problem with one of these and that is if it focuses. Ton is showing us the uh, little handle there that he's had to cut. Uh, meanwhile one of the rubber frames had uh, around the outside there had um, come apart so we've basically taken one piece apart and put it together on another three. This is the problem, some corrosion inside had happened with the, the catch that uh, closes the, seals the window up and we couldn't remove it so we've had to cut it off. Unfortunately this leaves us lots of spares. 
and May, meanwhile, is putting blue tape around the fitted windows because, of course, we haven't sealed these yet, we're just putting them in place. And the idea is, is that uh, when our white butyl tape comes, which I've ordered from the States, uh, we'll take off one, one at a time and uh, seal them up properly. But I just wanted to make sure that we had enough um, fittings, bolts, screws, nuts, whatever, uh, for all the fittings first before we actually uh, sealed them all up. So I'm making May redo the tape because, well, I don't think she's ever used blue tape before. She's struggling a bit. Look at the concentration on that face. Go on, May, you can do it. So that's one of the problems with getting uh, workers to work on the boat who you can't communicate with. I tried showing May what to do, but unfortunately she probably doesn't realise why she's doing it. And recently I've been showing Tom to move video clips so that they understand the context of the job that they are undertaking. And poor old May of course, as far as she's concerned, she just thinks she's putting a bit of tape around the uh, hatch windows and doesn't realise why. So it's uh, one of the problems with uh, language barriers unfortunately. Fortunately, Moo knows what to do, very experienced man that he is, and he's still working on these though, it uh, takes a lot of time and effort and he's making sure that those lines are absolutely smooth. That means sanding it back and if you remember he sprays it with black spray paint. There were a few repairs and improvements to be made as we started to examine the various fittings. A couple of the windows needed some attention, so we removed and cleaned the old sealant and resealed with Sikaflex 295. <laughs> The Genoa sheet tracks had a bit of corrosion in them, so we epoxied the pits and sanded them back. <laughs> Here we have May's hard work, our nice shiny stanchions and uh, bases and next to that you can see the conduit that uh, I bought the other day from the, from the window and door shop and Ton has successfully managed to cut them in half so these are our channels for our LED lights just to help dissipate the heat so we'll paint those black and uh, stick them up and put the LED lights in them. It was a busy week in the yard this week as we said farewell to two boats. With PSS at maximum capacity, saying goodbye to two yachts left a small gap for another ferry to make its way in. Good. Beautiful day. Look at this, we've got no big boats moving, in the yard. Big moving, beautiful day. How many boats no are you land. moving? Today, um, six boat moving and 11 times. Turn, swap, go, turn. In one day, Un calculated that they moved the cradle system 11 times, backwards, forwards, sideways, up and down the track, so that they could get southern wing and fairway into the river at high water. Yeah. 
So we wave goodbye to yet more short-termers, shall we call them? Fair winds to Lynette, Kerry, Phil and Sandy. Yachties weren't the only people I said goodbye to this week. With the project drawing to a close and most of the carpentry work complete, it was time to lay off Tui and just keep his brother, Ton, on for the last few bits. It was a little sad, really, as Tui had been part of the team since the start. Despite the language barrier, we've had a lot of laughs. At the end of his last day, Tui told us a bit about the caged birds he and other workers bring into the yard. They enter them into weekly singing competitions. Uh, 300 bad. Like. Pinang. Pinang. First place. Oh, first place, 4,000 bad. 4,000? Yes. Yeah. Second place, 3,000. Well, that's good money. Third place, 2,000. Uh, fourth place to 10th place, 1,004. Okay. And how much would a bird like this cost? So Jimmy, would you like to get one <laughs> and bring one with you? Well, I'll be honest, I'm not really into caged birds. I don't like the idea of caged birds. Birds should fly free. But I have to say, I'm fascinated by this. And of course, when the workers come and work on the boat yard, uh, they hang the bird cages up around the, around the boat. So quite often, throughout the day, this is the sound that we can hear, along with saws and planes and sanding instruments. And in the background, we hear this, and it's a very, it's a lovely sound. It's a nice sound. Thank you too. <laughs> Hello. Hello. If I get time, I'll try and make it down to one of the competitions. In the meantime, a farewell to Tui, and farewell to you too, until next time. <laughs>